In 2003, Sony unleashed sensor technology like we've never seen. And to this date, it's only existed in one camera. This is the Sony FA28. This is a very unique camera, not only by design, but by the technology inside. You see, by 2004, the 8 megapixel war was raging on. Sony had to come out the gate strong because the competition was fierce. There were offerings on the way from Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Minolta, all sporting new 8 megapixel CCD sensors. So what was Sony's plan to separate itself from the competition? Could its unique swivel design be enough? Let's take a look at the specs. We have a Carl Zeiss lens with a zoom range of 28 to 200 millimeter, dual memory support, a built-in flash, can shoot RAW plus JPEG, plenty of physical dials. But Sony had a trick up its sleeve, and that was the sensor, an RGB-E sensor. But what does that mean? Well, compared to a standard RGB sensor with the color array of red, green, blue, Sony added a fourth color. Emerald, promising improved color accuracy, recording natural images closer to the perception of the human eye. So how do we unlock this potential? And what's really happening inside this camera? Let's take a look at the manual. This camera has two color modes, standard and real. Standard shoots to make the resulting shot easier on the eyes. The image becomes more vivid compared to its real color and the contrast becomes higher. Real mode shoots for faithfulness to the actual texture and color, which the contrast, brightness, and saturation become lower. This mode is suitable for modifying the image on a computer. So is that all it is? Just a flatter image with more flexibility in post? I think we need to take a closer look. I did test shots where I took every combination of real and standard with contrast up, saturation down, contrast down, saturation up, and I could not find two images that looked alike. So that means there's more going on here. When you raise the contrast and saturation back into the real mode, you get an image that's more comparable to standard, except then you can see the difference in the color. When we zoom in on the text, you can see in the yellow. In real mode, it looks looks more pure yellow. In standard, there's a little more of a greenish hue or tint. And this is true when we look at all the samples. The greens look more green and real, less in standard. The reds, the blues, you can see there's some sort of color shift happening here. Now whether it's better or more pleasing, that's subjective. And looking closer at the skin tones, you can see in standard mode, there's a green shift happening. In real, it just looks more natural. Now what if we shoot in RAW? Well, there is a compatibility issue. We can't open these files in Capture One, and even Sony's RAW converter doesn't support it. But we can open them in Photoshop and Lightroom. But there's one problem. Whether you're shooting in standard or real, the images look exactly the same. And even stranger, colors look even different. So if you don't like Adobe's RAW conversion, there's one more option. If you have the original disc that came with the camera, it's Sony's original RAW converter from 2003. When you open these files, the images look exactly like you shot them in camera. If you shot them in standard or real, all the adjustments stick. But this is not practical for one more reason. Shooting files in RAW is painfully slow. It could take up to 10 seconds to write a single RAW file. So I'll be shooting this camera in JPEG, real mode, with contrast and saturation boosted. Because I want these images to look the way Sony intended with their RGBE sensor. So now that we have a better understanding about what's happening with the colors, let's take a look at some samples. Now I'm even more intrigued by this camera. 
Why did Sony completely abandon this sensor? And how does it stack up against the competition? You're gonna wanna subscribe for this, cause it's about to get real.